this project. But the project was about more than just the entrepreneurs being Randian heroes. Because an idea was emerging in California that said that the new computer technologies could turn everyone into heroic individuals. It was a vision of a society where the old forms of political control would be unnecessary. Because computer networks could create order in society without central control. This had never happened before, because at the heart of Western political thought had always been a fear that if you allowed individuals too much freedom, you would get anarchy. But ever since the 1970s, computer utopians in California believed that if human beings were linked by webs of computers, then together they could create their own kind of order. It was a cybernetic dream which said that the feedback of information between all the individuals connected as nodes in the network would work to create a self-stabilizing system. The world would be stable, yet everyone would be heroic Randian beings, completely free to follow their desires. Now, in the 1990s, the technologies had been built. But in 1991, the leading computer engineer from California gave a dramatic demonstration. He was called Lauren Carpenter. He invited hundreds of people to a large shed. On each seat was a small paddle, and in front of them was a giant screen. We told them nothing for a while. We just left them, left the things on the seats, and people would pick this up and look at it and say, what's that? And then somebody noticed that there's little red and green dots up there on the screen, and this is red and green. So maybe that has something to do with that. That would be that. Okay, there I am. And when that happened, the room erupted. <laughs> Just totally spontaneous. We didn't say anything. Carpenter then began an experiment. He projected the early computer game Pong. Each half of the audience jointly controlled the bat on their side of the screen. If an individual held up red on their paddle, a computer sensor picked it up the bat on the screen went down. If they held up green, it went up. But they had to operate it together. When the game is being played and the ball is going back and forth, if it's down here and it's headed that way, some people are going to have to show red to keep it from going all the way to the top. If everybody just showed green, it would flame up the top and the ball would miss. So something happened in that group of people where some decided to show green and some decided to show red to cause it to stop in the right place. And we have no idea what did that. to believe that what he had created was a model of a society where there was no hierarchy, where everyone made their own decisions without guidance, yet because they were linked by the machines, out of it came a stability and an order. So they're all acting as individuals because each one of them can decide what they're going to do. They have total freedom of what, what to decide to do, but there's an order. There's a, an order that emerges that gives them a kind of, a, of a, an amoeba-like effect where they're, they surge and, and they play. It was kind of in the nature of an experiment. I wanted to see if no hierarchy existed at all, what would happen. And what did happen? They formed a, um, a kind of a, 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 um, a subconscious consensus. Out of 